if you have taken A level mechanics, I'm sure you appreciate how difficult it can be. So I am here to tell you the top tips and tricks and the secret formulas that nobody tells you. So I am very, very sure you will have seen questions involving a person in an elevator or this thing on a pulley. Those sorts of questions all link back to one formula. So this formula applies because everything being considered here is vertical. Therefore, gravity is being considered, which is why we use weight. If you were looking at A for this one, and we're looking at anything else, which I'll get to in a minute, going horizontally, then this formula is slightly different. So it's T minus W equals MA, which is tension minus weight equals mass by acceleration. So obviously mass is in kilograms and weight is mg. Everything we're looking at in these instances is something suspended in the air, right? Which means it's not touching anything. So this box B here is actually not touching the side, which means there's no friction force to consider. This is really, really straightforward in year 12. And then you get things a little bit more complicated when they're on slopes in year 13. But again, it, it all links back to a really simple formula. So this has got no contact, this has got no contact, this has got no contact, which is why friction is not considered in the equation. I'm sure in year 12, this is also just an assumption you learn, you assume there is no air resistance, which is why air resistance is not considered. So if you get a question where air resistance is considered, you just put air resistance in there. What I really do need to point out about this equation is that I have assumed that we are talking about it going upwards, which is why it's tension minus weight, because tension is greater than the weight, which means it's going up. If it's moving downwards, the weight is greater than the tension, therefore it's W minus T equals MA. So you just need to look at the direction and then decide which way you use it. So the assumptions is that there is no air resistance and the string is light and inextensible. This means it has no mass and does not stretch. In this particular instance, this would have its own different formula. Doing that, you would possibly say the table is rough or the table is smooth, depending on whether you're considering friction. And then usually the pulley is smooth as well. I am also positively sure that you will have seen questions involving a car pulling a caravan. So that would be a diagram like this. And this is pretty much what you need to consider. So it's moving in this direction because A is towing B. The difference in this to the last question is that it's moving horizontally, not vertically. So therefore we don't consider vertical forces like this and this because it's perfectly matched. So our weight on the floor is perfectly matched by the resistance force from the floor. If you get heavier, the force upwards also gets greater. So it's perfectly matched each time, therefore we don't go through the floor and we also don't go off the floor. <laughs> so the vertical forces are always equally matched, therefore don't need to be considered. So we only consider horizontal forces. The main formula you'd use is you would consider it all as one particle. You'd just say this is one big circle. So you go the current driving force. That's the force being exerted that's making it move forwards. So that's the current driving force. And then you subtract the total resistance force. So it may say the car experiences a resistance force of and the caravan experiences a resistance force of. Two different resistance forces, but you add them together and subtract it from the current driving force. And that is equal to the total mass multiplied by the acceleration. However, this is assuming it is on a smooth road. That is all you'll be asked in year 12. But in year 13, if it says it's a rough road and there's a coefficient of friction, you would then have to consider the current driving force, subtract the resistance, subtract the friction equals MA. So you just add friction into that. This is why the question would say the car has a resistance force of and the caravan has a different resistance force of because you only use B's resistance there. So T minus B's resistance equals B's mass multiplied by total acceleration. Like the other one where it was tension minus weight going upwards, you're considering it horizontally. So it's tension minus resistance equals MA. So you basically just consider that as one. And that is pretty much all you need to know for those sorts of questions. If the tension turns out to be negative, that means it's a compression force. So also like that question from before, you get back to this. So this links to this, except the current driving force is obviously the tension. You think about it going horizontally, whereas this goes back to the vertical. So this would be W minus T equals MA. And that is just B's MA. And then this is just A's MA. That possibly sounds a bit confusing, but I do hope this is clearing things up. So they all separate out into their own separate equations. Therefore you establish different simultaneous equations which can be solved to get what you're trying to find. So these two are obviously both the vertical ones that I was talking about. So this splits out into this. A is going upwards, so it's T minus W. C is going downwards, so it's W minus T. Whereas B, we have to consider horizontally, not vertically. It's going to the right, so it's T2 minus T1, possibly minus F, depending on whether the question says the table is rough or 
smooth equals B's mass multiplied by the acceleration. So you have to remember that these are two different ropes, therefore there are two different tensions. But the fact of the string being light and inextensible and also the pulley being smooth means that the tension is the same on each side. Not the same on each side of this, but this side and this side is the same as T1, this side and this side is the same as T2. That's why assumptions are important. So you'd just be able to solve those simultaneous equations to get what you're trying to find. If you get given a question where there is more than one trailer, you'd have to remember that there are two different tensions between them because it's like two different ropes. But to find one particular tension, you would have to consider it separately. So if you were going to find T2, you would just really consider that. Whereas if you're finding T1, you have to consider B and C as one total particle, therefore D. So then you get this same formula again. So I think that means that year 12 content is pretty much covered now. We are moving on to year 13. And one of the first things you learn is moments. So moment is weight by distance, but there are also formulas to this dependent on the diagram. So this is probably more like the first diagram you will learn. So I've just put this on the board in stupid order, but this is the main formula you will end up needing to know. So if we look at this diagram first, this is a bit more of a complicated one. So in this instance, there are two pivots, A and B. So you would find simultaneous equations and likely solve it that way. So the formula for taking moments about A is therefore the resistance force from the pivot at B multiplied by the distance from A, which will be equal to the weight of the object and that's the distance from A. And then you will also be able to do the same in the opposite direction when you take moments about B. If you have a more simple moment or diagram like this, there will only be one pivot. You will notice that one will be positive and one will be negative because they will balance each other out. It will literally be the weight by distance from there will be equal to that one's weight distance by there. So W1D is equal to W2D. Remember that mass is in kilograms. So you have to sort of remember in that that the distance of R from R is zero which is why that ends up being zero and one will be negative. So you'd be able to move it onto the opposite side and then end up with that formula there. So the assumptions in this is that the rod is rigid. You may also possibly have to assume that the rod is uniform, which means that its center of mass acts from the center. You also assume that all of the masses placed onto the rod are particles. The point of tilting means that R is zero and D means the distance from the pivot. I would also like to point out that this is just one particular diagram. In other diagrams, you may have the pivot actually being upwards as if the plank is hanging from the ceiling or something. In that instance, it would not be R, it would be T for tension. Again, as you get into year 13, you get more complicated things like objects on a slope. Therefore, you have an angle. But this again, all links back to what you've previously been taught. So you take this diagram and sort of transform it into something like that, even more if you'd want to, if that makes it clearer for you. And from seeing it like that, you then have your vertical and horizontal components to consider just like we've previously learned, which obviously links back to this formula. So if it's going up the slope, again, it's like T minus W equals MA. It's this side is greater than this side. So it's this side, take this side equals MA. If it's stationary, then A is zero. So this side would just be equal to this side. That is the formula you would sort of end up learning. You do have to remember to consider these green aspects. These forces are not perfectly parallel or perpendicular to the slope, therefore you have to consider them in both directions, therefore you have to use trigonometry, which is cos and sin, to get all of the forces and then once you've got it into that you can plug it into a formula and consider it. To be able to find R to then use it in your friction formula, you would have to remember that because the object is not actually being lifted off the ground, and therefore these upwards forces are equal to the downward force. That would allow you to solve to find R and therefore you can plug it into F and therefore find whatever else you need to find. Again, you just remember to rearrange that formula so it would be left subtract right if it was going down the slope. And just like that, we have projectiles, which also you have to use trigonometry for. But if you imagine this was a projectile and this is its initial speed, this is considering it both horizontal and vertical components. So you need to separate that back out. Remember, cos crushes the angle, so horizontal speed is u cos theta, whereas vertical speed is u sin theta. And then you can plug the vertical aspect into suvats because that's obviously vertical, so it considers gravity whereas horizontal has no vertical motion it does not consider gravity that's your assumption it has no vertical motion you assume that air resistance has no effect on its motion basically speed equals distance over time it links back to that formula distance equals speed by time so it's therefore u cos theta by t and then of course in that you need to remember all of your Subats facts that you'll have learned in year 12. So at the maximum height V equals zero, assume that the projectile is a particle, is not powered and has no spin. In Subats you're assuming that acceleration is always constant, it's only in other questions like differentiation and integration where acceleration can change. Maximum height considers distance from the ground, not the original position. If something is released it means its initial speed or U is zero. If you are throwing a stone upwards it means it's purely vertical therefore you're 
not considering horizontal, therefore it's not a projectile. So remember that air resistance is negligible, the stone is a particle, gravity is constant and there is no horizontal motion. You can use those as your assumptions. At the point when it's coming down, you go with gravity, so gravity is positive, it's going upwards, gravity is negative. As long as you change the sign when you change direction, it really doesn't matter, but that's just the one I prefer. So there you go, I really do hope that helps you. Obviously I haven't covered absolutely everything, but it's just a few of the extra things that will really help you get to grips with it and I really hope it does. Good luck. Bye.